Hello. Now it's time for another discussion on the operation of potted chips using our Summon planning tool based on fast time simulation. And uh, you know it's a series of movies. What I already did is the first one on comparison conventional and new pot strategy within out configuration. Then I added a more basic discussion on a simplified vector approach for pot forces making headway. And this was already done. And today the focus is on stern first method. That means the ship is going astern with potted ships. And uh, today I will only give an introduction and explain the potential, which is uh, uh, available to increase the turning capability of a ship to achieve a better safety and operational envelope for the vessel. Okay, this will be the program for today. Next time, hopefully, I will go more on practical samples, specifically under strong wind. And again, if you have some other ideas or suggestions, please let me know. Okay, today. Um, we will go first into a comparison of the turning characteristics. First, making headway. Uh, this is only to make, how to say, a recap, a refreshment of what you already know about the ship uh, using either a control unit as propeller rudder at the stern or pot at the stern or both thrusters at the bow of the ship. Then we will add the same for going stern. This is then for a stern first method. Again, to explain the, uh, how to say, the development of pivot point uh, position and the different qualities using either the pots or thrusters, both thrusters. And the final thing will be uh, to uh, end up with some discussions where we are using the pots now in split mode. Here we are using the pots in sync mode and here in split mode with two different angles or revolutions. Okay, let's start. And as I said, we are using the Salmon tool for this uh, comparison. For our sample scenario, we are using a cruise ship, which has two ASI pots uh, and also uh, both thrusters. It's uh, even for both thrusters, but we will, uh, use, we will be using it only in sync mode altogether. And the ship is making headway 4.6 knots going ahead. And um, this is based on the engine order telegraph settings of 20% ahead. So what we see here is the ship um, is just proceeding 360 knots. So I moved the reference position a little bit ahead. But now we will compare what will happen if I use the pots or the bow thrusters to generate a turning circle. First with the pots and we are going to uh, starboard 30. So this is now starboard 30 degrees. And what you see here is due to the fast time simulation, it's immediately shown what happens. So here are the black contours, are the shapes of the vessel every minute. So we are looking ahead for 12 minutes and our focus position, uh, this blue, um, blue shape was moved by this time slider from zero seconds. That means the ship is still in the position where this red contour is, the starting contour. But when we move this out, then we see that the, that the blue shape is coming out one minute. And what we see is the uh, vectors um, at the stern, the green one, this is the transverse uh, speed vector coming out of the stern. And in red, we see the uh, transverse speed um, to, at the bow position. 
and we see that the um, position of the pivot point is already moved from the center position uh, to uh, the ahead position. And if we go more forward, so this is now, let's say, 600 seconds. Uh, that means 10 minutes ahead. We can grab it and move it, but uh, it might be better to use it every 10 seconds. So now we are at 600 seconds, 10 minutes. Um, okay, this is moving ahead. The discussion of this maneuver should be first uh, explain the big drift angle because the pods are pointing in this direction, in this one, so we have a transverse force pointing out of the future turning circle. That's why we got a tremendous drift angle, so the ship is being turned into a drift angle, and this drift motion is responsible that the ship is moving into the inside of the turning circle due to lift forces acting on the ship's hull. So this is the situation. We need that drift angle to go to the port side with starboard uh, 30 degrees with the pots. And these big drift angle, as a consequence, uh, needs more space, more swept path. And also the speed of the ship has dropped after 10 minutes to 1.83 knots. So from the initial speed of 4.6, we are going down to this small speed because the increase of the resistance is that big. So we see that the pivot point has moved forward due to the drift angle. If it's pure turning, then the pivot point is in the ship center. But if it's drifting, then the pivot point is moving to the bow. Let's compare now this situation or this maneuver with a pure bow thruster maneuver. So we go back to midship. So this will be the initial position. And with 4.6 knots, the bow thruster is uh, quite acting quite uh, reliable. So we go to 100% to the port side. The consequence of this action can we see here. So now it's a different thing. There's a control force at the bow of the vessel pulling the bow into this direction. And these bow thrusters are very powerful. So there is no, how to say, no need and no uh, reason that there will be a drift angle, same as we have seen before. The control force pulls the bow of the ship into this turning circle. It could be even with some negative uh, drift angles if the bow thruster force is that powerful. The consequence will be seen here because there's no drift angle. The ship's contours are nicely lined up and in a chain. So no big swept path. And also it has consequences for the speed of the vessel because there's no drift angle. So there's no speed loss. The drift, uh, the speed even goes a little bit up. So no speed loss, even a little bit increased due to the additional power of the thruster, which is added to a certain minimal uh, extent to the motion. So this is a difference if a ship is going ahead. And these, how to say, relations, these conditions, this effect can also be transferred now to the astern motion, but in a swapped way that uh, the pots and the thrusters will have now opposite effects. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, we go to the initial position here, and we start now with a maneuver when the pots are in 180 degree position pulling the ship astern. For this new starting position, I'm using an already preconditioned situation file. So now we have the situation that the ship is going astern, again with a speed of 4.6 knots, but 
we have to increase the uh, power a little bit. So it's now the engine is setting to 30% of engine order. So we are going with a slightly higher revolution astern because uh, we want to compare the same speed of both uh, initial conditions. And because the ship is going astern, there's a higher resistance because the stern is not that optimized for speed as the bow. So, but again, the ship is going with 4.6 knots astern. Okay, so the first, what we will, will do is now to compare if we use the thrusters. But both thrusters are now located at the aft end of the ship, seen in the direction of motion. And if we use these thrusters in the same way as we did bef uh, before, but now to the starboard side, then we see the effect. So what we see here is there's a very nice uh, uh, turning behavior, but if we go back to show detailed what is happening there, then we see when the ship is going out of this position. So we see immediately that in the first one, so the, the, the pivot point is now moving to the stern, and we have already here um, a big drift angle, so the bow swings out as we see here. So, so we have a, a, a big uh, swept pass, maneuvering space needed to this side. And later on, uh, the, the pivot point is now moving to the stern. So it's now 3.20, now it's uh, 10 minutes uh, is the position here. And uh, the the, the bow swings out and the ship turns around the stern of the vessel. And the speed uh, loss is uh, 3.56 knots is the ship still having in the continuous steady state turning motion. Now let's compare the same thing with the, uh, using the, the pots. So we switch the thrusters to zero. And now we are using the pots. So we need it in 30 degrees. That means 150 degrees. Uh, this is this situation. So, uh, but these pots are not synchronized. So now they are synchronized here. And this is the maneuver to compare. Now, what we see here is that the, again, the control force is now acting at the front of the vessel, which is now the stern, because the ship is going stern. So the pots are pulling the ship into the turning motion. Therefore, no drift angle occurs, and the ship's shapes are exactly lined up here, even a little bit with a negative uh, drift angle, and the um, the center as uh, the pivot point is close to the center of the vessel so um, it's to compare with the thruster action which we had in a head motion and the speed loss is only 3.60 knots so there is a certain speed loss uh, due to the fact that the uh, power of the uh, pots are now not directly uh, um, pulling the ship uh, in the um, direction of the motion. So therefore, there's a certain, uh, how to say, deficiency in the speed. But we have a lot of reserve if we are using the pots in a different operation mode. We can split. The idea is now we have desynchronize that we, we, have, we have split the other put so we can move both of them separately. And the idea is to generate a, a thrust vector of 90 degree. We have learned in the last movie we have several options to do that, but I suggest uh, now to uh, 
use it here for, for 60 degree, going to uh, 60 degree, now we have 70, so this is 60 degree. This would be the consequence if one is still going a stern, but this one is going with 60. And if we go with that one um, to 120, for instance, so we're doing is like this, 40, 35, 120 degree. So this would be the situation. So what we see is the turning circle is squeezed together and uh, the pivot point is moving uh, still in the center. Um, and what we see is that the big forces of support are pulling immediately the stern out of the direction of motion. I, I will go back in the timeline to, to explain how it works. So the azimut propulsion is pulling immediately the bow, as, now, sorry, now the stern in this direction. And then we go further and then we see uh, what happens um, in the final end when the pivot point is nearly in the center. Okay, and now we do uh, another maneuver. I will go again back uh, to 180 degree and again here. So what we could, could do next is now, for instance, to use only one pot. For instance, this one to turn this inward and this pot will not be needed. I switch it off to, to zero and uh, so it's sort of stopping the vessel. And this one will be used to be turned inward. So you see that we can achieve by means of this one pot, this is now 80 degree, 60 degrees, so we can achieve a very high turning rate. Uh, no, not a very high turning rate, a very small radius of the ship. So the, the ship is nearly turning around the bow. Only the stern is moved into this direction. Um, by the way, in this case, yeah, the, the uh, ship is, uh, the, the pivot point is nearly at the, is more closer to the bow here because the ship is turning around the bow. Okay, so what we have learned, there are many options uh, to, to do that, even if we direct the thrust more in opposite against the direction of motion. So we can even stop the ship more. So to stay on that position. So there are many options uh, available, uh, only using one pot, so you can only concentrate on one control unit. Um, yeah, there might be much more uh, ideas uh, to sum it up. Now I will start a final summary uh, to talk about lessons learned and draw some general conclusions from our experiments. Uh, for this reason, I want to compare uh, first a ship which is using first a ship which is uh, making headway or in this way stern way, but the control forces are acting at the aft end of the ship. So for going ahead using the pots at the end or going astern using the bow thruster at now at the aft end of the ship. And um, the specific thing is here that in this case the control forces are acting outside of the turning motion. That means the rudder or pot forces are acting in this direction, creating a drift angle and therefore the ship is going to port side. And here is the same, the thrusters are working to port side, so the bow swings out. So this is the characteristic of the motion and now we see what happens. These forces are creating a drift angle which supports the turning. So because the force works, works outside, the ship can only turn by means of a drift angle. 
This leads to a much bigger swept path, as we see here and also here. And uh, so in this case, we get a larger speed loss. For instance, here we see that the speed drops to 1.55 knots from before 4.6 without changing the, th the uh, um, propulsion. And then also the pivot point position uh, is in this case, as we see it here, is to the fore end of the vessel. So it's nearly at the bow here, or here, if the ship is moving astern, it's close to the stern. That means always in the fore end of the motion. And this is valid for ships both making headway, like this, or stern way, independent from the type of the controls, whether it is thrusters, pots, rudders. Um, and so we have drawn the first conclusion. Second conclusion. Now the control forces are acting uh, at the fore end of the ship. That means in case the ship is making headway, then it's in this case the bow thruster which is working. Or uh, if the ship is going sternway, like here, then for instance the pots are at the fore part of the vessel seen in the direction of motion. And this leads to the following effects. This creates no or only very small drift angles. You see, the sh contours of the vessel are very nicely lined up. And uh, this means a much more smaller swept path. And the speed loss is nearly not existing. For instance, here in this case 4.6, we have here 4.7, so it's immediately uh, even getting a little bit faster. And uh, the pivot point in this case um, is more to the ship's center. So you see here that the pivot point seen from the bow and the uh, stern uh, transverse speed is at the ship's center and also in this case. Because if there is no drift angle, only rate of turn, then the pivot point is at the ship's center. Um, again, these general conclusions are valid for ships both making headway or sternway and are independent whether I use a thruster or pot or rudder. Um, by the way, this is what the why the stern first method in this case has so much advantage because no drift angle, you have your steering force uh, nearly at the bow, so you can pull the ship to any direction where you want to have her. So third part, position of the pivot point exclusively only on the pivot point. The pivot point, only to recap, can be easily um, estimated using the speed components, like here at the bow and at the stern. And here in this drawing, the speed components are marked here by this uh, arrow or here by this arrow as a vector for the speed at the bow and of the stern. And if you connect these both tips of the arrows of the vectors here, then you get the pivot point exactly here on the ship's center line. And um, the pivot point represents uh, the position where the transfer speed is zero. Here we have a speed there and here we have a speed to that direction, but here on that line, exactly here at the pivot point, the transfer speed is zero. And it clearly depends on the ratio between drifting and turning. We have seen if there's no drift, then the pivot point is at the ship's center, close to the center of gravity. But if we have drift, then it can be going outside of the vessel uh, to the infinite. And 
It is therefore the result of the momentary ship's motion. That means how the ship is just moving. This is the has consequence for the position of the pivot point. Uh, for instance, uh, the ship is here in this case still moving astern. You see here it's a slight ship speed astern. And in this case, the pivot point is even behind the center of gravity, so a little bit outside of the center. What is important to notice, and I want to tell it again and again, the pivot point cannot be seen as lever, as fulcrum to apply a certain moment or torque. This is totally nonsense. Um, this is wrong because the distance between the momentary pivot point and the force which you apply, apply changes immediately. If you apply the force, then the pivot point is going somewhere else. So it's not a, a lever to work on. And um, the steering, uh, uh, how to say, the steering effect of the control forces, be it thruster, pots or rudder, uh, depends highly on the ship's speed. Because the ship's speed is responsible for the forces at the ship hull. And if the ship is going slower, then these forces are going down and the control forces are going up, for instance. So these hull forces decreases and so the effect of the control forces as a ratio is increasing. And uh, this is, for instance, seen by this uh, maneuver where one pot the ship was moving with 4.6 knots. One pot was uh, switched to zero revolutions and the other one was even turned, like here, a little bit against the motion, so to say. So the speed drops and the um, control forces of the pots are getting bigger and bigger, having bigger effect and so the ship is nearly coming to a halt and turns on the spot. This is the idea why using pot and in the stern first mode. If you like to look deeper in all these, uh, how to say, uh, explanations about pivot point and its effect, you should have a look onto the movies on YouTube under ISIMS GmbH. So there's a movie theory behind turning dynamics of the ship. This addresses specifically the first part and also the pivot point special uh, for ship moving ahead or astern. There is it's explicitly e explained. And now we are heading to more um, samples for the steering with adipods. And this was the uh, focus today. So thank you very much.